The Thing, 1982, Asher film into a cottage industry with Halloween. But with The Thing, his remake of Howard Hawks and Christian Nibby's The Thing from Another World, is a nasty little number. He put a dozen men, led by the always brilliant Kurt Russell, against a shape-shifting extraterrestrial that's woken up from its icy tomb after a thousand years. After a thousand years. Near Dark, 1987, and Bloody, Catherine Bigelow's Near Dark is the bar that all new vampire movies have to clear. A dust devil of erotically charged spree killing, Near Dark follows a pack of nomadic bloodsuckers burning across the American Southwest in an RV, leaving nothing but corpses in their wake. But corpses... The Blair Witch Project, 19 changed forever after The Blair Witch Project. The found footage subgenre now a thriving multi-million dollar addition to both mainstream and direct-to-video horror, would never have become a viable option for filmmakers without The Blair Witch Project turning an immense profit on a relatively minuscule investment. Minuscule The Hills Have Eyes, 1970 be remembered today as the guy who brought postmodernism and Dallow's humor to American horror, thanks to Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street but before all that he made movies that seem genuinely dangerous and are often ranked among the greatest horror movies. Greatest horror movies. Night of the Living Dead, 1968 George Romero looked around at a world in turmoil, Vietnam, racial tension, high-profile assassinations, and let the ugliness seep into his first film, Night of the Living Dead, a righteously angry, aggressive deconstruction of suburban passive aggression. Giving an ancient monster, the zombie, new life that has yet to drain from it, he found the creature that best reflected a nation in crisis. Nation in crisis. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, now Hooker's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is still undervalued as a work of precise craft and bountiful art. Everyone knows about the film and its reputation is one of the most unsettling experiences in all of film history. But how many people can pinpoint the incredible work it took to have audiences blindsided by the sweltering ghouls at the heart of the story? Ghouls at the heart of the Kiro Neko, 1960 Japanese horror is long, storied and filled with more uncanny images of ghostly apparitions in things twisted beyond recognition. Director Kanato Shindo was not a horror director first and foremost, rather an incredibly patient purveyor of quiet communal studies. His interest lay in the way time passes, changing the fundamental nature of survival along the way. Survival along the way. The Exorcist, 1970 The Exorcist ranked third in our list of greatest horror movies. William Friedkin put to use his experience directing documentaries, crime dramas, and experimental theatrical adaptations when adapting William Peter Blatty's best-selling tale of a young woman possessed. Friedkin shreds his viewers' nerves with one unexpected technique or image after another. Technique or image after an The Shining, 1980. But he slowed to a crawl in the years following The Shining, and while in one sense it's tragic we never got more films from him than we did, it would have been tough for him to do better than his ultimate psychosexual daydream Eyes Wide Shut or The Shining, one of the greatest horror movies ever crafted. He's ever crafted. Psycho, 1960, number one position among the greatest horror movies more than Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock was a scientist, a man who experimented with the emotions and reactions of his audience, and images were the medium under his microscope. Psycho was his experiment in making a film with the budget of a TV production and in breaking expectations. Breaking expect 